Well, what's up guys, Mason the Brock Henderson here, and this is NCIS Season 19, Episode 7, Docked. So unfortunately this one took a few steps backwards, only because the good stuff in this episode was still there. But it felt like the annoying stuff, the stuff that was not that great, it felt like it was a lot more apparent in this episode. And obviously Judy is at the forefront of most of it. Because as much as I like Tim and Delilah and all of that, Judy is annoying. <laughs> she is. And I don't know, man, like that, that whole story just felt frustrating and stupid and unrealistic. And I don't know, maybe this type of stuff does happen, but the extent, like they, uh, they obviously will over exaggerate some things for comedy sake, but this was over exaggerated to a point of kind of annoyance. It almost felt kind of sitcom-y, but this is not a sitcom and it wasn't as funny as it would possibly be in a sitcom. So, yeah, I just, I didn't really find it that funny. Any Anything that happened with Judy, the only thing that I, I think I enjoyed was seeing some of Tim's reactions throughout the episode. And that that typically is kind of a funny thing. You know, having the the guy have to step in, in like a, conver or not a conversation, an argument, a confrontation, I think is the word I'm trying to think of between his spouse and their family, <laughs> you know, I think having that as a setup, typically pretty funny, no matter what setup it is. However, everything else with Judy was just not fun or interesting. You know, her constantly, oh, I didn't think to tell you that because I didn't think it was important. It's a murder investigation. Oh, I, I didn't think of that. Whoops. Like that's, it's stupid on another level. It's stupid on a level that it's, it reaches a level of frustration for me. And I, just, I, I was just getting sick of it about halfway through. In fact, whenever McGee sat down with them and had that final moment of talk to each other, I think I missed half of that conversation because I kind of spaced out. I was so bored and annoyed by the whole situation. So, yeah, it was not very great. The case itself was also not that interesting. There was a moment where it got a little interesting. Whenever they found out that the guy had actually given this card to Judy to give to NCIS, I thought that was kind of, it, it was felt like it was setting up for something kind of fun, but ultimately, I mean, kind of figured it was going to be the captain. <laughs> In fact, I almost predicted the entire case when they first went to talk to him because they had the one guy who was the magician show up and it was arguing with the captain. All I could think was, all right, so the captain did it and this guy's going to be the red herring. <laughs> It almost, I almost kind of want to start doing more reaction reviews and like do, doing clips and stuff throughout the episode, just so whenever I say stuff like that, I can prove, Hey, I'm, I'm literally calling this in the middle of the episode because it's that obvious sometimes. So this was not one that I, I managed to figure it out like the last or episode six. I managed to figure it out because there were certain clues that they had sort of thrown in there that I'm like, ah, I'm piecing this together. This one was just, well, the captain seems like a nice guy. Seems like he's willing to help. That guy seems like an, an asshole. I'm going to take a guess and say that guy's the red herring that didn't do it. The captain's the one that did do it because that's just how shows like this work. And that's exactly how it worked. If you're that predictable, you're doing something wrong, you know? So even though there were certain things, I think... Once again, having Parker join the team, having all of the different changes and the stuff he's trying to do as, the, as their new boss, some of that still really worked. You know, some of the back and forth between him and Torres, him and McGee kind of bonding over what he went through before with his ex-wife and what McGee's currently going through. Some of that stuff really worked. And I feel like there's there's good connection there that they're starting to build that I I really like how they're handling it. But yeah, the case itself, super obvious, very by the books, again, cliche, basically. I predicted it from the first time I saw the characters for the most part. And everything with Judy was just annoying, dull. It was it was just not fun. So when when that stuff takes up a majority of your episode, that means that I'm I'm not enjoying myself. You know, when you have episodes where the case is kind of interesting and they have a lot of good jokes on the outside. That's when I'm having fun. That's when I'm entertained by the show. So if you're not doing that, you're kind of failing. 
because I don't have high expectations. I don't expect masterful writing or anything. I'm just coming in to be entertained by the show. And honestly, episodes like this don't do it. Episodes like this kind of frustrate me. So it's kind of weird. I feel like I'm not really breaking down critically these reviews because you can't really break down a show like NCIS. You can't really go and look through all of the writing stuff because it's it, a lot of it's coincidence. A lot of it is just pushing the narrative forward. Somehow a lot of it is, Oh, I didn't think of this before, but now I thought of it at this moment because we need to take another step forward in the plot. There's a lot of that. And ultimately that's what these shows have. But I think that's not what these shows are supposed to do. These shows are not supposed to, to make you really think hard and make you really work your brain. It's supposed to be fun. And episodes like this, they, they take the fun out of it. And if you're not having fun, you're kind of failing as a show. So that's how I'm kind of approaching these episodes now is, am I having fun? If not, why am I not having fun? And hopefully you guys enjoy that. <laughs> but whatever the case, that's it for this episode. On to the next one. I'll see you there. And now episode eight, Peacekeeper. So I'm going to try to not let my frustration seep through in this review because I've been having a lot of internet difficulties with this episode and it kept freezing and I had to keep restarting and it was a lot. But, uh, I mean, this episode was not that good, to be honest. I just, I know that some of my frustration with the episode is the fact that I was having internet problems while trying to watch it. But... It, it was more so building upon the frustration I already had with the episode because it really was a very dull one. It wasn't that entertaining. You know, they had to, they tried to do a little message, but in all honesty, I mean, the message was kind of everything I've seen before from shows where, you know, uh, talk about like gun safety and stuff. And it's stuff that most people know. Thankfully, they didn't really like lean too hard to one side or the other because I've definitely seen shows do that. But it still is just not, I don't know. It's not really something I want to watch, in a, especially in a show talking about federal officers that use weapons. It's just kind of like, what are you guys even talking about? It's, it's kind of stupid, to be honest. Um, but I don't know. Even outside of that little message, I just was not a fan of this case. It was not very well set up. It kind of felt like, I, I don't know, too simple. Like you, you think about how all, all the different things that was going on with this guy. And it, it felt like there were a few different possibilities. You know, the, the ex-wife, the girl he was seeing that's friends and working for the ex-wife. You got, he's, he's do, being a bouncer for this show that has, a bunch of safety stuff in it. There's a lot of possibilities to go with. There's a guy he had to throw out because he was selling a lot of weapons and ammo. So you got all this stuff and it turns into, oh, it was the bartender that he was being a bouncer for. And he got mad because the bouncer or the bartender accused him of stealing money. And the bartender just so happened to have bought a, a gun a few days ago and killed him. what you know like first of all he just so happened to buy a, a walther P ppk like a few days before he killed the bouncer what are the what are the chances of that that sounds more like i bought this gun because i want to take him out and not only that but talking about the guy like getting all mad because he got accused of, of robbing him i mean i guess you could say maybe the drink affected him a bit but the entire episode was all about, oh, he's such a nice guy, he's such a sweet guy, he's so nice, you know, he really tries to kill him with kindness type of, th like, that guy went into a rage and scared the dude enough to, to shoot him in fear. How does that make any sense? You've set up this entire episode that this guy is so nice and wouldn't hurt a fly unless he really felt like he had to, and suddenly he scared a guy into shooting him because he was so enraged at being accused of stealing money? I, it just, it didn't really feel connected. It felt like, again, you got all these different plot pieces that could have fit in and just none of it mattered. It was all that one bartender we saw in one scene, literally one scene earlier for maybe um, two minutes. 
he we we didn't even talk to him for the rest uh, granted that tends to be the the formula you, know, you introduce the killer you don't talk about him for a while and then they pop back up because they're the killer i it's the formula but still in some way that they're still connected you, know, you think about like the the dad from the from what's it called the track episode a few few episodes ago you think about that one that felt like okay you introduce the parents and then we kind of just ignored them for a little while but it still felt connected you know there's the the steroids that that was the connection we were talking about throughout most of the episode and then it turns out that the dad is the one that provided the steroids okay cool so you made that connection the bartender had no connection to the rest of the episode outside of he bought an old gun from the one guy that's it that's the only connection back to the bartender okay his motive had no nothing to do with the rest of everything. It was just a heat of the moment type of thing. And I don't know if this is them trying to to push the message of like, oh, guns are dangerous. People shouldn't just own guns because this is what could happen. You could get scared and pull it out on somebody and accidentally shoot them in, in fear. Like, I don't know if that's what they're going for. But whatever the case, I mean, this case, it's super weak. It's it's not fun. It's boring. And then again, the rest of the episode is mostly about Casey trying to decide whether she wants to buy a gun or not. And I'm sitting there going, she's not going to, because <laughs> why would an episode like from, from a show that, you know, again, most shows these days tend to be left leaning anyway, but especially when it comes to gun safety and stuff, I never see a show go, yeah, you should go buy a gun. Never. <laughs> They're always about don't go buy guns. And honestly, I, it didn't really matter, you know, cause they made their points throughout the episode. It didn't matter whether or not she bought a gun, but it still took up so much time throughout this entire episode. And I just, I don't care. You know, like Casey, she's gotten better throughout the season. She's not the annoying character that she was whenever she first started, but she's still not one of my favorites. She still is kind of annoying from time to time. She still has, these moments where it feels like everything's sort of a joke to her. I don't know. I mean, I get why she's scared. I get she's been through a lot and I understand the reasoning. I'm not saying that the reasoning is not there for why she has this story, but to take up a whole, I would say probably a third of the episode. It's not that interesting, you know, to see her go back and forth and stuff. It's just, it's not. And Again, you don't have an interesting enough case and finish to the case to really get me excited to to see what is going to happen. You know, the only, I mean, the only thing that kept me going in this episode was just the fact that I I did want to see. I'm like, okay, you presented all this stuff, but it doesn't feel like any of this is going to be why he was killed. So, what is the motive? Why was he killed? Who could have possibly done it? You know, like I, it, it was one of those. I was curious, but I was also like, I feel like if, if they're going to give me a motive, it feels like it's probably going to be out of left field. It's probably going to be something that has not even really been talked about that much. And it turns out it was something that wasn't even talked about hardly at all, <laughs> or wasn't even talked about ever. You know, this whole missing $300, not, not brought up once. And that's the motive for the guy. It's, it's just sloppy. And again, I'm here just trying to be entertained. This was not an entertaining episode. This was not fun for me. I was thoroughly bored. Even the the little jokes, you know, you got Torres with his car, you got Parker and his making references to his childhood. None of it was really that funny or entertaining either. It was just very straightforward. So, yeah, not really a good episode. And again, I'm, I'm not letting my frustration with the the internet problems take over here. Like it was not a good episode in my opinion. So that being said, we're on to the final of these three episodes. I'm going to try to push through. I'm going to try to, to calm down myself, even though the internet's probably going to keep pissing me off. But anyways, I'll see you guys there in just a minute. And finally, episode nine, collective memory. Things look a little different. It's because the internet kept messing up. I was done with it. This is the next day, whatever. No, this one ended up being okay. At first, I was a little worried because I was definitely with Torres on this whole thing. Like the idea of having a 3D hologram of yourself, it's 
especially nowadays, it's gotten even more scary to, for that thought. Because really, what's the point? And what is the point of having something like this? The only reason I can think of is the reason presented in this episode, where you want to leave something behind for maybe some family that you don't talk to anymore. Something like that. But that's about it. <laughs> and the problem is, if we start doing this for everybody, especially how far AI has come, because this was you know, late 2021, now it's 2024. AI has come so far that somebody could easily use that, regenerate your voice, and have you say all sorts of stuff after your death. So I, it's a very slippery slope, and it's one that they, they kind of painted it as like, oh, this is such an awesome idea. I'm thinking, no, not really. It, it is weird. It's very weird. It leads to a nice moment, because again, in the, in the context of this episode and what she used it for, I thought it was fine. And I thought it was sweet and all of that. But that's about the only scenario where I can think it works. Every other scenario I think past that is, nope, that can be abused and used against people and used for people in malicious ways. So, yeah, I'm definitely not on board with that. But no, the overall story I thought was fine. Um, not too predictable. You know, it, it definitely was feeling more like the lawyer especially after they went and talked to him because my first thought was the butler too just how highly he was praising her and stuff and honestly i was kind of wondering if we were gonna find out that the reason he was acting this way is because he felt so bad about what he did but we never really got that confirmation it just we found out he's the one that sent the letter we found out somebody paid him to do it and that's kind of where his story ended i felt like that was a weird place to end it you know, the, the way he was talking about her and the way he was acting at the beginning of the episode, I thought, okay, so this is leading to he feels bad for what he did because he actually did love her. But we never came back to that. So I thought that was kind of a plot hole that they, or a plot point that they left open-ended. So I don't know if we're supposed to imply that or if they just forgot to finish that story. But once the lawyer pointed the finger at the butler, that's that's when I kind of started suspecting him just because it, it feel, felt too obvious convenient for him to just be like oh well, have you looked at jeffrey over there because he's done some weird stuff it, yeah it, at that point i'm kind of like okay so you're definitely involved right you you are involved in this in some way and you probably had a hand in her death and to find out his reasoning you know it's eh, i guess it's it's not bad and actually it's not something that i i really considered but you know it makes some sort of sense finding out that he was involved with the blackmail in the first place. I, I like that twist. You know, I thought that it was handled pretty well. You know, it was not something that came out of left field. They did build it up a bit. So yeah, I, I, I think it's a solid twist. It's maybe some, I, I have seen stuff like this before, so maybe a little cliche, but not bad. You know, it was, it was well written and well set up for me. So, but I think his acting at the end was honestly not great. I thought the daughter actually did a pretty solid job throughout most of the episode but his acting at the end was very goofy it's just the way he's <laughs> it, it did not look realistic it did not look natural it looked like he was really putting on an act <laughs> so but i think overall you know not for what it's set up to be for the whole hologram thing and all of this stuff i i wasn't wholly on board for that so the fact that they did manage to pull it around in the end and get me to feel and care for these this daughter who honestly was kind of acting like a jerk throughout most of the episode anyway. For me to care about that by the end of the episode, it tells me that they, they did a good job of writing these characters and setting up this narrative to make it wholesome, to make it meaningful. So all in all, a pretty solid episode. So that being said, though, that's it for me. So let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. What were your thoughts on these three episodes? Let me know. We can talk about and discuss all that good stuff. Leave a like and subscribe for future NCIS reviews. And until next time, I hope you guys have a great day. I'll talk to you all later. Peace out.